Hey everyone, it's Professor Downey again. I'm going to be creating a short video, it's hopefully going to be short, uh, reminding you of the things that we covered in class. And there's going to be four topics that I want to cover. And the first one is going to be showing you how to get to the LibGuide. And on the LibGuide is the things that we talked about in class. So there's kind of a one-stop shop for um, finding the resources that we talked about. Uh, the second thing, I'm going to be uh, reminding you on how to use the media, media bias checkers that we went over. Uh, the third thing, reminding you what to do if you hit a paywall and how do you access the resources that the library has for free. And the fourth thing is going to be showing you how to access specific newspapers. So if you don't want to look at all the newspapers that the library has access to and you want to only search a specific one, I'll remind you how to do that. All right, to get to the LibGuide, we start out at the library homepage, which is just library.valpo.edu. On the right-hand side, there's subject and library guides. And then we have all the different subjects alphabetically listed. So we're going to go to education. And then we're going to go over here to my class, ed 327. And here it is. And then the video that you're watching today, this is very meta, is going to be right here at the top in the middle. And the next thing that we're going to be talking about is looking at these two tools that we have. The Add Fonts, Interactive Media Chart. Um, this one is the one that uh, looks at more of the national uh, media sources. So if there's a particular one that you're looking at, you can just type it in here. So I'm going to use USA Today as my source. Click it here. And we can see that they have, in their methodology, they've ranked a lot of different articles in their pods. And if you want to find out how, more about their methodology, if you go back to the LibGuide, they go over it here in detail about how they use multiple people and um, it's a very in-depth process of ranking each article, ranking each um, piece of uh, work that comes from USA Today and how they have uh, different people from different backgrounds and different um, political leanings all ranking it and then how they average it out. It's pretty interesting in case you like that kind of stuff. But then you can see that they tend to fall in the left center and in the most part they are providing most uh, reliable for news but then they also have uh, some opinion context in there because they're just starting to touch in this yellow area. Uh, obviously, if you were to get something down in this box, we know that there's um, some extremism going on in there, and that's pretty much where we're getting into the fake news area. So, again, this one is best if you're looking at national newspapers, but if you're looking at more local newspapers, uh, you can look at the media bias fact check. So if you were interested in uh, like Northwest Indiana Times, you can just search right here. We find that it is not very biased that they get a pop up. You have to pay for the pop-up free version, uh, they're not biased, um, that they are balanced editorial, but they, they slightly favor to the right. You can see that it's just slightly to the right, and they are high for factual reporting. But you can do that for a lot of smaller newspapers, as well as the um, national. So it would be good, you know, if you want to really do your due diligence and compare both the ad fonts, ad fonts and the media bias fact check and see how those two compare in their rating of different newspapers. All right, point three that I want to talk about is what to happen, what to do when you happen to hit a paywall. 
it's very likely to happen because if you do a Google search and you go to an online newspaper, um, they're going to probably let you read a little bit of the newspaper and then they're going to try to get you to subscribe or pay for something. And as your librarian, it's my job to tell you don't pay for anything because there's a good chance that the library is already paying for it for you. So in order to find what the library already is paying for, for you, um, you can either A, when you're doing a Google search, make sure that you're signed into your valpo.edu account when you're go searching Google, because then it should already um, verify that you have access through your Valpo account through the library. Or you can go to Summon here, and Summon searches everything that the library has, all the databases. Or if you want to look for specific, um, through specific newspapers, you can go one of these two options. But we'll start with Summon. So I like to go to the advanced search because it gives me a little bit more of a way to construct my search. So I'm going to do book ban or book banning or book censorship. And then I'm also going to put elementary schools in there. And then the way to narrow it down just to newspapers is in content type. Newspaper article, newspaper. And I'm going to say that I want it within the last year. So something fairly current. Alright, got nine results. If I had put more ors in there, I could have gotten um, more results in there. And then also that I made sure that it had to be elementary schools. Um, that also probably limited if I had also put an or primary schools, or maybe just or elementary, I would have gotten more results. But I was pretty specific by putting that in quotes. So um, here's one from the Washington Post. I could go straight there. It's from March 20, March 23rd, 2022. But again, a Google search might find something a little bit more recent. But um, again, it would be something that I might get hit with a paywall. Again, if we don't have access to it, like legitimately the library does not have access to it, then that's something that you could request via interlibrary loan. And then the fourth point that I want to talk to you about is if you wanted to look for a specific newspaper within a database. So let's try in this one Nexus Uni. So say you are really interested in the New York Times and you want to see what the New York Times publishes on a specific topic. Um, the way that we could do this, uh, again, I like to go to advanced search and um, I'm going to go to, I'm going to stick with book banning or book ban or book censorship. And then I'm going to stick with um, actually I'm going to do date is after and I'm going to make it and then what I can do is add my specific source. So New York Times. And I want to make sure that I'm picking New York Times and not the abstracts. Because this is the the New York Times is the full issue and not just pieces of it. And then say I wanted to add another one, I could even add a uh, second publication to my list. So if I was also interested in um, Washington Post, I could add Washington Post. Um, okay, Washington Post isn't in this one. I lied. Um, let's try LA Times. Los Angeles Times. All right. And then I can hit search and see if there's been anything posted since then. And there has. There's been 75 things, uh, 75 uh, news pieces published 
in those two publications since that April deadline that I put in there. So that's how I would search in those two publications um, for my topic. So I hope this is a good refresher based on what we talked about in class. Um, and if you have any questions, you're always welcome to reach out to me. Thanks for tuning in.